What is going on, everybody? James Hancock here, back to review episode two of season two of Legion, an episode just called Chapter 10. If you've been following my channel for a while, you can tell I've made some changes since the last videos. I moved into a new place about a month ago, and I've been way behind on decorations, and as you can tell, I'm still way behind, but at least now I have the shelf which I put together yesterday, and I can slowly but surely add a lot of geeky shit like comics and Blu-rays, etc., to give my videos just a tad more style, personality, atmosphere, etc. But getting back to tonight's episode of Legion, I feel like if you compare this show to any other superhero show being made out there on any platform, whether it's Runaways on Hulu or The Defenders on Netflix, when you have a show as strong as this, even if the landscape is populated by a lot of other strong superhero shows, and in the last year I've loved a lot of shows like The Punisher over on Netflix, I thought that was absolutely amazing. But when something as bold and groundbreaking and original and experimental as Legion comes along, it sometimes runs the risk of making all the other shows seem childish and irrelevant by comparison. And as someone who grew up in the 80s, reading every comic book in sight, remembering full well what it was like when there were no superhero shows around except for like a brief shining moment where we had The Flash or Lois and Clark, I much prefer to have this overcrowded landscape with too many different shows to follow because I feel like when it comes to any creative enterprise, there's a natural aristocracy of talent. And my hope is that there's an entire generation of teenagers out there right now who are watching Legion and their eyeballs are just going wide and they're like, whoa, superheroes can be like this? And we'll see dividends being paid 15, 20 years down the road when that generation of impressionable young fans decides to do their own spin on the superhero genre. Because Noah Hawley is very clearly one of those creators who saw Twin Peaks back in the early 90s, was totally spellbound and blown away. And here we are in 2018, seeing what a remarkable storyteller he's become. I mean, I would argue that when it comes to just the style and the photography, the overall look and tone of this show. No other superhero show right now even comes close. Whether I'm enjoying comics as a reader or watching a show or watching a movie, one of the things that I've always loved since I was a very young child is superb villains. I need villains who are charming, brilliant, ruthless, and incredibly lethal. And I think that's one of the main reasons I find myself responding so enthusiastically to Legion right now. I could watch Aubrey Plaza and Jermaine Clement run around murdering people while dancing and singing pretty much on a loop and be deliriously entertained. I think both actors bring a ton to the table, but it just seems like they're having so much goddamn fun. And villains should have fun. That's why Loki's so much fun in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No matter what sick, horrible, backstabbing deeds he's engaging in, he always does it with a smile on his face. But more importantly, this episode shows us the true face of Amal Farouk for the first time. And it appears as if moving forward, Amal Farouk and David are gonna have to form an uneasy alliance if they're gonna prevent some horrible pandemic from wiping out humanity in the years to come. And for my own personal taste, watching heroes and villains team up is always a huge thrill. It's one of the things that made Thor Ragnarok such a blast this past year, watching Loki and Thor team up. Only a few years ago, Loki murdered like half of New York City, but here we were watching him and his brother teaming up and it was an absolute blast to watch. While maybe I'm jumping the gun just a tad, it seems as if this episode tonight was setting up some serious team ups between Amul Farouk and David Holler. So this episode begins with David basically betraying Division 3 and tricking them to go on a wild goose hunt while Oliver and Lenny basically lay waste to Division 3. As I mentioned before, they're walking and dancing and singing and having a blast and they're disintegrating people left and right and turning them into animals. They do horrible things to the two carries and we basically see the consequences over the course of this episode as many people in Division 3 start to suspect that David is not to be trusted. Both Fukuyama and Clark suspect there's a very high likelihood that David is not being entirely forthcoming with them. But we also see that the two carries, as formidable as they are together, they are absolutely no match for the Shadow King. And they get basically thrown together in this disgusting way where one carry's arm is sticking out of the other. They're just in a really, really bad place. And David proposes to the two carries that if Carry were to amp up that little sensory deprivation chamber to the point where David could have multi-dimensional perception, and that with that power, if he were able to find Farouk, that with that knowledge, that it might help get the two carries disentangled. We also see the Shadow King in the form of Oliver going to visit Melanie and he basically tells her that he's looking for a Migo monk because this one Migo monk is perhaps the only person alive who knows where Amul Farouk's body has been hidden away. So once his senses are totally jacked up, we get some really interesting lore about what's going to happen in the future because David and the future version of Sid, the older version of Sid, they get together and it's really creepy because she's missing her left arm. You can tell it's a very horrible time period in which she lives and she talks about how there's some enormous threat that just started out like an idea, like like an egg, but that in comparison, Amul Farouk 
is a totally insignificant threat. While Amul Farouk might kill some people, this new threat wants to kill all people, and that they basically need Farouk to be alive in order to fight him. However, at some point in present day David's not so distant future, apparently he kills the Shadow King, and so Sid tells him that he definitely needs to not do that, and that he needs to team up with him and help him find his body. This episode features another one of those really great kind of short film essays. It's almost like a DVD supplementary feature, and I didn't even recognize it in the previous episode, but John Hamm does the voiceover narration for these little sequences. And it starts out with this interesting idea that reality is one of the few things where when you stop believing in it, it doesn't go away. And after a little exploration of how ticks and dogs perceive the world through their senses, he talks about how humans perceive the world through their minds. He basically shows the risks of what you can do when you warp someone's mind with the incorrect information, which leads to a child walking out into traffic, misinterpreting what a red light versus a green light means. But I absolutely love these little breaks. They give us a moment to decompress and exhale during the show. But stylistically, they're some of the most interesting parts of the entire series. But as I mentioned in my previous video, one of the things I like most about Legion is the way it captures astral combat. A lot of movies and shows and comics have tackled the subject of astral combat, but this show just really nails it. David basically sends out a telepathic message to Amul Farouk saying that they need to speak, and we finally get to see him in his true form as a fortune teller and he and David they don't really go to war in the astral plane but they definitely have a little sparring match first they appear as wrestlers wearing their little singlets then of course the shadow king changes form into a samurai David very quickly realizes you don't fight somebody on the astral plane on their own terms so instead of turning into yet another samurai he turns into a tank then the shadow king turns into a cloud of mist and that's the way astral combat should go but they have this really interesting bonding session where the shadow king's telling David that he needs to work his mind like a muscle and that basically he needs to join the big boys at the table he basically is a god who can recreate reality in any way he sees fit. And eventually they make a deal. If the Shadow King will stop killing people and disintegrating them and turning them into animals, that David will help Amul Farouk find this monk and find the body. As a massive fan of Aubrey Plaza, it was also fun to see her have a scene just as Lenny, as herself, no longer possessed by the Shadow King, talking to Farouk, basically saying that it's been a shit blast, and I love that expression, but that it's been a shit blast and she's ready to return to her own life and do her own thing, and that she's hoping that the Shadow King will form a body for her to inhabit, because obviously her old body is very much toast from the first season. Back at the Division 3, we see the two carries finally manage to separate. However, they're unable to rejoin together like they like to. And we see that in the female carry that she's got all these new white streaks in her hair. But David finally decides that even if it's a breach of trust with the future Sid, then he needs to have a conversation with the present day Sid and he explains to her everything. He basically says, you came to me, you warned me about this impending disaster and that the only way to stop it is to reunite the Shadow King with his body so that he will be there to fight this new threat. And she quickly approves and wants to help. The episode ends in a really creepy fashion where we see all those people who are chattering down in the basement who are the previous Shadow King victims that this monk they're looking for is just kind of hanging out and walking around amongst them. And the teaser suggested that there's many more interesting things to come in the subsequent episodes. So I'm absolutely in love with this show right now. It might be my favorite show on TV. I mean, there's a very good chance that Westworld Season 2 might bump it out of that slot, or perhaps The Expanse Season 3 will when it comes out tomorrow night. Another show that I'm absolutely loving to pieces but haven't had a chance to do a review yet is The Terror over on AMC. If you're a fan of horror and like nautical adventure stories, The Terror is absolutely worth watching. But it's very tough to compete with a show as groundbreaking and original as Legion. In any case, I hope you enjoyed my reaction and review. Let me know what you think about the episode in the comments below. If you want to talk more, you can always find me on Twitter. I'm an absolute ghoul. I just basically live on that platform. And I'll be back at y'all tomorrow night to review the season three premiere of The Expanse. So as always, I greatly appreciate the support from my channel. I sincerely appreciate it. And I'll talk to y'all soon.